How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? I've always wondered, would God give us an instruction that would fail if we followed it diligently? Would God give us an instruction that would break us? I don't believe it would. I don't believe God ever gives us any instructions without giving us the tools to do them. But Simon Peter didn't, he didn't know this. He didn't know who Jesus was at that stage. And it's only when he saw the multitude of fishes that he realized he was standing in the presence of greatness. And he said, get away from me, Lord. What God is saying. And I think it's important for us all to, to listen and take a moment and listen to that still quiet voice that talks to us all the time and tells us. And um, if we block out all the sounds around us, we can hear God. Um, I've got an example of something I want to go through. And this is something I looked at a while ago and always wondered about what it meant. Um, we're going to be looking at the book of Luke and the book of John. Uh, Luke 5, we're going to start in. And I'd just like to say that, you know, it's only by God's grace that I'm, I'm here today for many reasons. Uh, one, for the obvious reason of him keeping me and um, taking me through some trials and tribulations in my life, through sicknesses. Um, and that's the first reason that God has been good to me and, and kept me here. But secondly, um, this is probably one of the last things that I had ever thought I would do or wanted to do. Um, which is to stand in front of a church talking about scriptures and because I don't see myself in that light. Um, so I know this is God's work because on my own strength, I would not be here. I'd be in the back row behind the chair so no one could see me. So this is to God's glory and praise his holy name. So we're going to look at uh, the book of Luke and we're going to read. I'll read from verse 1 down to verse 10. Uh, in Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone from, out from them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him, that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Praise his holy name. So here we see an example of an instruction that Peter was given by the Lord. And we talked earlier about, he who has ears, let him hear. So Peter listened to this instruction. But I've always wondered, the instruction that he was given, was it fully followed? And A, was it fully followed? And B, why did he follow the instruction? So let's just set the scene a little bit with what we just read. So Peter was out all night fishing. And what did they catch? They caught nothing. So to me, all night means all through the night. Must have been a long night out there in the dark. Um, and I went to Israel 
a couple of months ago and went to the Sea of Tiberias. And um, they have fisher, fisher nets that I saw, some were new style, but they also showed us some old nets. And the fishing nets are probably about the size of this room, maybe even bigger. So they're big square or rectangle pieces of net, and it takes more than one person to let the nets out. So you might have four men maybe unrolling the nets, putting them into the sea, um, and obviously trying to catch a draft. So the instruction that Jesus gave Simon Peter is he said, let down the nets. Now he said, let down the nets, plural, as in more than one net. So of course there were nets that they had. But what does Simon say? He says, I'm going in verse 5, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net, singular. So he listened to Jesus' instruction, but he didn't listen fully. He heard what he wanted to hear. Now his position was probably after being there all night, thinking this man's asked me to do something. There's no way I'm going to get out four nets, five nets. I'm going to get out one net just to pacify him. So he let down the net, and what happened? He caught a large multitude of fishes. And the fishes were so much that what happened? The net began to break. And the ships began to sink as they filled them up. So I've always wondered, would God give us an instruction that would fail if we followed it diligently? Would God give us an instruction that would break us? I don't believe it would. I don't believe God ever gives us any instructions without giving us the tools to do them. But Simon Peter, didn't, he didn't know this. He didn't know who Jesus was at that stage. And it's only when he saw the multitude of fishes that he realized he was standing in the presence of greatness. And he said, get away from me, Lord. Now, this is a very small thing that we might overlook and say, well, he listened. He did what he was supposed to do. But in my opinion, he didn't listen diligently. Now, if he had let down the nets, plural, what do you think would have happened? I think he would have caught four or five, however many nets he had, full of fishes. Because if Jesus has given us an instruction, he who has ears, let him hear. And there are many examples of this in the Bible where Jesus will say something and if you go back in the Old Testament where there's another instruction given, and there's always a reason behind it. It's not for, for saying sake. It's not just because, okay, this sounds good. You know, God gives us instructions for specific purposes. We talk about things like clean and unclean meats, and God says, you know, these are good for eating, these are not good for eating. And scientific evidence will tell you now that some of the foods that are unclean meats cause a lot more health problems. But yet people will listen to what they want to listen to and not listen to what they don't want to listen to. And that causes problems. You see, God knows everything. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows what's good for our bodies. He created our bodies. And he gives us instruction not to be a dictator, but for, for our health, for our benefit. So, obviously the, the scripture we just read was um, Simon Peter at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, or near the beginning. He hadn't been through everything, he didn't come to know who he was um, until the end, near the end of his ministry. So, in a way you can excuse him for not diligently following the instructions, but at the same time, he was told to do something that he didn't fully do. So now we're going to move over to John, the book of John, uh, and chapter 21. And we're going to see another example of an instruction that Simon Peter was given. So John, chapter 21. And we're going to read from verse 2 down to verse 6, and then verse 11. 
John 21, verse 2. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast a net in the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They therefore cast, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. And moving down to verse 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, 153. And for all there were so many, yet was the net not broken. Praise the Lord. So here we see a parallel verse, if you like, to what we read in Luke. Similar scenario, been out fishing all night, caught nothing. This man shows up on the lake. They don't know who he is. And he says to them, have you caught anything? They say, no. And he says, cast your net into the right-hand side, and there you shall find. So what did they do? They got the net and they cast it into the left-hand side of the boat, right? What did they do? They cast it into the right-hand side. They listened. And did they cast three or four nets? They cast one net because Jesus said, let down your net into the right-hand side of the boat. And they caught 153 large fishes. But it specifies, it says, but the net did not break. In the first example, we saw them catching a huge multitude of fishes and the net broke. This time it didn't break. What's that saying to us? So to me, it says that if we follow diligently the word that God gives us, it will not break us. It will not fail. And that is a classic example of something Simon Peter had come to learn, come to listen. You know, that the Bible says that he didn't know or they didn't know that it was the Lord. But there was something prompting them, a spirit. There was something within them that said, let's listen to this guy. He, he knows what he's talking about. And they followed it. So brothers and sisters, really what I want to say to you today, and this includes myself, is that sometimes we hear words from God. And you know how we know that they're from God? Because they're in here. They're in here. There's no excuse for us saying we didn't hear or we didn't know. Because God has put his laws on, the, on our heart, but he's put them in this book. And this is not, a, it's not a magic book. It's not a spellbinding book. You can't just have the Bible and say, it's going to bring to pass your promises. You have to read and you have to live by it. And sometimes we've come into situations in our life where things can be difficult. And we get a clear word. We want to pick out A and B from it, but ignore C and D, because C and D is too difficult for us. Do you remember when Jesus said to the disciples, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will never see life? He said it to the disciples and all other people amongst him uh, in the book of John. And it said, and from that time, many people turned back because the words were too hard. They couldn't take those words on board, you know. And he asked the disciples, he said, what about you 12? Are you going to go? And Simon Peter said, no, um, you have the, the words of life. So where will we, will we go? You see, sometimes the word of God is difficult. Sometimes a situation in, in our life may be challenged by the word of God. And it's easy to sort of listen to the bit that, that applies, that, that helps us, and ignore the bits that don't. But brothers and sisters, I'm telling you today, if we apply this word diligently, it will never fail. Amen. It's never failed me, and it will never fail you. Another point on um, what we've read today is, 
You see, God is, the Bible said, he's not a respecter of person. Okay? So we've got an example of the disciples, Simon Peter specifically, where he was given an instruction. But God doesn't look at that and say, oh, because he's Simon Peter, that instruction applies for him. It's the same principle for us today. If we listen to his word, then we will reap the benefits of it. I think I've spoken before in uh, Sabbath school about how if you apply God's law, you will see how it brings fruit in your life, regardless of your position in terms of are you a Christian, are you not a Christian, do you not believe in God? His laws are constant. You reap what you sow, that's a constant law. Whatever you reap, so you shall sow. He says, give and it will be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. That's not just giving, let's say, money, for example. But if you give love, if you give help, if you give support, if you give care, you will get that back. Because God is not a respecter of person. He won't just do it for Simon Peter and not do it for Brother John or, or myself. He will do it for he, whoever applies that principle, which is why it says, he who has ears, let him hear. So, brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you to keep pressing forward, keep fighting the fight. And to those who are going through trials and tribulations and struggles, you know, God will not do for one and not do for you. But as we learned today in Sabbath school, the key is faith. Because without faith is what? It's impossible to please God. We can't please him in our own natural strength, in our own effort, in our own wisdom, the limited wisdom that we have. We have to trust in him. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, And we walk by faith, not by sight. Now that is a very profound statement. Because when you walk in the natural, so long as you can see, you walk by sight. Nobody walks with their eyes closed. We walk because we can see the path and we follow it. Yet 2 Corinthians 5, 7 is saying, walk by faith, not by sight. So it's kind of contrary to what we would do in the natural. And that's the clue. You see, it's not the natural that we operate in. We operate in the supernatural through the power of God. Through his grace, through his mercy, we can expect the unexpected. But we have to apply the principle, and the principle is walk by faith. Faith comes first, you see? And brothers and sisters, don't get me wrong, as I'm standing here preaching to you, I'm also preaching to myself. Because sometimes when I'm going through the struggle, I forget these things. And God has to remind me. He says, go back to what you know. Revert to the word. It's the word that has the life in it. Spirit and life is in this word. I'm going to close with talking about something that's really amazing in terms of how much God loves us. You know, we always read the scripture, uh, John 3:16, for God so loved the world. And it's true, of course, God does... He does love the world. But sometimes we don't understand the sacrifice that God made in order for us to live forever. And there was a time not too long ago that I did a, a study. And the study is quite a deep study. I don't have time to go into it now. Um, maybe one day, if the Lord wills, I, I will do that. But the study was about why God did what he did for us? The easy answer is because he loved us. We, we know that. But there was a reason behind it all. And love being the key reason, but there were reasons behind why God wanted us to live forever. Why he wants us to be in eternity with him. And it's amazing to think that an all-powerful God who created everything, the heavens, the earth, and everything that lives therein, 
wants man, mankind, flesh and blood, that here today, gone tomorrow, as they say. It's amazing to think that he wants us to be with him eternally. But he has a reason. He doesn't do anything without a reason. So I just want to leave you with this thought that, you know, if God gave up everything he had, the most precious gift we could ever receive, his son Christ Jesus, he sacrificed him that we may live. And the Bible says it was done before the foundations of the world. So this was before mankind even existed. He already had this plan. He already foreknew what would happen. And he knew we would need rescuing. He knew we would need a savior. He knew we couldn't do it on our own. And that is the key. You cannot do it on your own. If you're going through a struggle, if you're going through a battle, don't try and do it on your own. Because it won't work. Our own instruction, our own diligence, our own wisdom and knowledge is limited. You know, God's wisdom is unlimited. Sometimes he puts us in certain positions to build our character, to encourage us to keep fighting. I just want to end with uh, Romans 5. And I'll read from, in fact, I'll read from um, verse 1 down to verse 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations work of patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. You see, the point I'm trying to make is there is nothing that we go through that doesn't have a purpose. Thank you. It's funny, actually, giving me the, um, the flannel. A couple of weeks ago, Brother Byron was up here, <laughs> and um, he was preaching, and he was sweating. And I said to him after, I said, yeah, that's because the word is, is affecting you. But that's why I'm sweating now, because the word is so powerful. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So as I'm speaking, I'm also hearing what I'm speaking. So I'm hearing, I'm gaining faith, and the word is is within me. So back to Romans 5, where it talks about glory in, in tribulations. I mean, that, that is difficult to do. You're going through a situation, and the word says, glory in it. Who wants to glory in a situation? You know, but there's a reason for it, and it tells you why. It says, tribulations work of patience. You learn to bear and to be patient with things when you're going through something. You know, if you don't go through a situation, you can never truly appreciate what that situation would be like if someone else goes through it. You can have an understanding, but you'll never truly know how that person feels or how it feels to be in that situation without going through it yourself. So you gain patience. And what in turn does the patience do? It gives you experience. Experience is having been through something before, having knowledge of something that has happened previously. So I just want to take the sickness, for example, pain, let's say back pain. You know, you have a tribulation of back pain and it says glory in that tribulation. So you're there walking around with a bad back and you're, hallelujah. How do you do that? But the word says we should glory in it because the tribulation that we're going through at that time, it gives us patience. It makes us patient to wait on the Lord. And then patience gives us experience. The experience is if you have back pain today and you get through the day by the grace of God, 
and tomorrow you have no back pain. And then the following day you have back pain. You now have experience of having the back pain the couple days before, knowing that you got through it, meaning that if you've got through it once, you can get through it twice. You know, the grace of God is with us eternally. So the experience we gain from tribulations is key. And then it says experience gives us what? Hope. We now gain hope. And what's the hope? The hope is that he who has delivered us before will deliver us again. And I just want to encourage you on that note to keep pressing on, keep fighting, keep the faith, and just remember that God is not a respecter of persons. He will do it for whosoever applies it. As the scripture says, he who has ears, let him hear. Thank you. Wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't that wonderful, brethren? Amen. Absolute. Let's praise the Lord for Brother ba Daniel. There. there are so many nuggets there that it's truly amazing. Never saw that before. Net. <laughs> it's nets. It's true. I never saw that before. If they had put down the nets indeed, they would have been able to hold a fish. He that hath an ear to hear. <laughs> It's absolutely wonderful indeed. And you know something, it really amazes me because I never told Brother Daniel the scriptures I'd be using. And I am absolutely blown away by how the Spirit of God has worked today. And I'm glad that the Spirit is right anyhow. Let's look at these scriptures because to be teachable, he taught them, he said to them, do it. But they did it their way. And then there was trouble. Brethren, if we want to have success in life, we've got to be teachable. And when the teacher says, do something, let us do it. And it brings home to me when Mother Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And they filled the jar with water and they didn't fill a f one, they filled a few. It's amazing. Today, I think, is a wonderful launch for us in a new situation. He that hath and hear to hear, let him hear. And it is consistent that the Lord is not. It's wonderful, a respecter of persons. And today, as we thank the Lord for you, Brother Daniel, the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you as you timely and wonderfully teach his word. Because our gather is a teacher, amen. And he taught us well today. And I am amazed at the power. Let's give the Lord a mighty praise and thanks for our brother. It's absolutely wonderful. It is true what the Lord says, that if we want to get the blessing, we must be teachable. Carry out his instructions. And they are people who do not want to change. And if we do not want to change, we will never be teachable. So we must learn to change. Amen? Wonderful. Hi, thank you for watching. I hope you were blessed. If you want more videos, then click here. If you want more in-depth study of the Word of God, then click here. And if you want any other further videos relating to this video you just watched, then click right here. And please visit our website, which is just along here. Thank you for watching and stay blessed.